Hello DMG clan. Today, I am going to show you the most boring video of all time. How to set up your R4 card with Twilight menu in 2024. Just kidding. What's going on DMG clan today? I'm going to show you how to set up your R4 card in 2024 the way I want to with Twilight menu. So let's level up our gaming knowledge even more before I shut the door. Hint, hint. The very first thing we need to do is get ourselves a DS or a DS Lite. Now, as soon as you get your DS or your DS Lite, you're going to get yourself your infamous R4 card. So as long as your R4 card says www.r4isdhc.com on the back, on the motherboard, and says real-time save on the front, the year doesn't matter, but this card is the card that we're gonna be setting up today. The also card, also note that it doesn't matter if it says RTS Lite on it either, because this card is the exact same motherboard on the back as you see here. Now the next thing you need is a micro SD card. I highly recommend you to get at least a 32 gigabyte micro SD card or below. 32 gigabytes is perfect enough. These SD cards are great. They are Gigastone, Camera Plus, they're cheap, they're A1, 3B30, R4 cards, just kidding, SD cards that you can use inside your R4 card without any issues whatsoever. Why I recommend 32 gigabytes, not anything bigger than that, is because anything bigger than 32 gigabytes is basically a waste of space, and it's just not recommended. The next thing you need is a PC. So a Windows PC, sorry Mac users, this guide will work if you know how to use your Mac, but I don't really care for Mac, so sorry, not sorry, because I'm Canadian, and I say sorry, eh? But this will still work for Mac users. Android, I have a guide in the link of the description below for Android users as well. Yes, you can do this with your Android device. Go watch that video if all you have is an Android phone or a tablet because as long as you can connect to your Android phone or a tablet with a little USB-C adapter like this, you'll be able to follow along with this guide or just the Android version of this guide as well. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our micro SD card and shove it into our PC. I'm using a Windows 11 PC for this. It doesn't matter if it's Windows 10, Windows 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. That doesn't matter. As long as you have a Windows PC of some sort and you're able to actually format your card. You're going to navigate to the two files in the description below if you don't already have these files. Because sometimes people jump ahead, they download things, and then they don't follow the guide. And then they say it doesn't work. Make sure you follow this guide. I put a lot of effort into this. That's why you're going to subscribe and you're going to like this video and comment. I love cheese in the comment section below. The reason why I love cheese is because it clogs me up. Clogs me up with happiness, that is. Now, let's jump on over to our computer and download these two programs. One is called Twilight Menu R4 RTS 2024. Why did I put 2024? Well, that's because it works for any cards that are the real-time save cards that I showed you at the beginning. No, it doesn't mean that it only works for the 2024 cards. It means that it works for any of those cards. Now, you're going to right click on that file. You're going to click Extract All. A little window is going to pop up right here. Click Extract and let it do its thing. Now, once those files are extracted, you're going to do the same thing with the SD Formatter tool. Now, the reason why I suggest you to use the SD Formatter tool, which I already have installed on my computer, by the way, is because this tool is really great for formatting your SD cards that are 32 gigabytes or below really quickly and really efficiently. What I mean by that is sometimes the default SD formatter on your computer, if you go to your USB drive and click format, sometimes breaks things. Not sure why, I think it's a Windows thing, and this SD formatter tool does what it needs to. So double click on the setup guide, follow the prompts, and install that tool. Now close out of your windows, and you're gonna navigate and look for your SD formatter tool. So you can either search for it, I have mine sitting right here, and I'm gonna open it up. There's gonna be a little window that you cannot see right now called yes or no. Well, it's not really called yes or no, it's just a window that says yes or no, so you click yes so that it'll actually open up. Now, this is what you're going to see. Make sure you take note of the drive letter that we are formatting. So as long as you only have one card in there, you won't even notice a difference, but if you had multiple different SD cards in your computer, then you might see drives I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z in there. So click refresh, make sure you take note of that. If you want to double check, you can go to your file manager, go to your sidebar here and look for that drive. Now this card is already formatted, but we're just going to format it again just because. So click OK, click OK again, click 
not cancel and click OK again, click exit. And now we have our SD card formatted properly. Now we're going to navigate back to our downloads folder. Now inside our downloads folder, you're going to navigate into that Twilight menu, our 4 rtsr 2024 card. And you're going to grab all of these files, right click on them, click copy, and then you're going to navigate to your drive I, and you're going to paste those files in here. Now you don't have to worry about anything else. All you have to do is copy these six individual files. And then you're going to copy your games into the corresponding folders inside of the ROMs directory, just like so. So, GBA is for Game Boy Advance, GB is for Game Boy Color, Genesis is Gen, GG is Game Gear, NDS is Nintendo DS, NES is Super Nintendo, SNES is Nintendo, just kidding, just make sure you're paying attention. For those that want to correct me if I'm wrong, SNES is obviously Super Nintendo, guys. It's not rocket science if you grew up in the era that I did. Now, A26 is Atari, ColecoVision, DSiWare, don't even worry about that. You can delete the folders that you don't want in here. I just kept them in here because it makes things easy for those that want to play some Atari. Yes, all of the emulators are already located in the NDS Twilight Menu Emulators folder. You can see all of the emulators right here. And these are all the emulators already ready to go for those that want to play Neo Geo Pocket, NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, all that kind of stuff. They are all in here are ready to go. You don't have to worry about this. I'm just letting you know that they're already ready to go. I've already set up also the Super Nintendo configuration file for you. I had to fix this because the developers of Twilight Menu broke it for some reason. And it doesn't work unless you use mine. So there you go. Happy birthday. Merry Christmas. Wanaka, Sonica, and... Now, for copying your games. Because we still haven't done that. I kind of went on a rant. Now you're going to navigate to your folder that you have all your games in. Mine is in my favorite games folder. These are all of my dumped games that I dumped with my Twilight menu on my God Mode 9 on my Nintendo DSi, including my saves. So I'm going to split my windows. I'm going to split this window over here, and I'm going to split this window right here. Now we're going to navigate into our NDS folder, and you're going to notice that my games have a .sav file, and they also have a .nds file. So I'm going to click on the type icon, and split those up so that I can copy all of my .sav files all at once, place them into my folder that says place NDS saves here, and then I'm going to copy all of my game files that say place NDS games in here, they don't actually say that, it's just where you're supposed to put them, into that folder as well. Now that all those games are copied over, we can just jump in and start playing. So let's pop this out of our computer, our PC, our Windows PC, and subscribe to the channel one more time. Make sure that you only subscribe once because if you subscribe again, and you're subscribed already, you'll unsubscribe. So don't do that, because you're gonna subscribe. Remember, because I love you. Now, what do we plug our SD card into our Artifort card? No, I'm not Russian. We are going to put it aside. We're not gonna put it into our DS just yet. The reason why is because we're gonna flip open our flippy flappy Hello Kitty DS, just like so, and play with it for an hour. No, just kidding. Let's press the power. Yeah, they did, they did, they did, they did, they did, they I said power and hour and it rhymed. Now let's go down to the settings right here. Click on the settings icon. Click on this icon right here. And we're going to make sure that this is set to manual mode. Now the reason for this is because auto mode sometimes bugs out the R4 card. So setting this to auto to boot right into the R4 card. Again, just kind of bugs it out and it's not recommended. So when you click confirm that you've set it to manual mode, this means that when we go into our DS for the very first time, we have to actually manually select our R4 card, which is fine. Now we can plug our R4 card back into our DS and turn it back on again, just like it's supposed to be in 2024. Now press A, press A on Bomberland. Now if you don't see Bomberland, that means that you didn't follow the first few minutes of the video where I said this is for this card specifically. So go away, have a nice day, check the playlist and be on your way. I'm just kidding, don't go away. But check the playlist in the link in the description below because I have R4 card guides for most of the R4 cards that are on the market that are the most popular ones at least for 2024. Now press A to play and you'll be presented with the Twilight Menu menu. Ta-da! So let's press A on GUI system, which is just your UI. Select your region of choice. I'm in Canada, so I'm gonna select USA, A, a, because I'm in Canada, A, eh? And then Twilight Menu is going to pop up. Now, we're going to navigate through Twilight Menu very quick. 
I'm going to show you where to go for changing your Twilight menu theme, your settings, all that kind of stuff, but you don't really need to mess around with that too, too much. I just like to show this so that you will know where the settings are for Twilight menu. First thing you're going to do, click the select button. The next thing you're going to do is go down to the icon that looks like the settings icon of your DS. Now you're inside the Twilight menu settings tab. What you can do in here is change your themes. I'm going to change mine to the Nintendo 3DS theme. You can turn off the Twilight menu jingle and the splash screen by going down to that section right there to turn it off to hide. You can go down to hide the Rocket Rob's logo and all that fun stuff. And then you're going to press B and it's going to save your settings automatically. Now this is going to take a second to actually reload because we changed the theme. And now we have a theme that looks like 3DS. Yes, it looks like a 3DS on a DS. Isn't that amazing? Now, the next thing I like to do is to hide this icon right here and hide this icon right here. What you're going to do is press X. Don't press anything else because you're Team Tyrannosaurus Rex. And now you're going to press Y and now it's going to hide it. Don't hide the ROMs folder. Hide the Rocket Rob's Twilight menu icon by pressing Y. And now you have only the ROMs folder, which is all that you need. Now you're going to select A on that ROMs folder. You're going to navigate all the way down to NDS, just like so. And then you're going to see all your favorite games in here. Now, the very first thing you're going to note is that they have the icons, just like so. You can't drag and drop them, unfortunately, just like a 3DS. They are just kind of organized the way that they are based off of the name. So we have alphabetical names here. And then if we press the Y button, you'll notice a new menu that pops up that lets you select if you want to use cheats. Once a cheater, always a cheater. If you want to cheat, then beater. Wait, what? No, don't do that. Anyways, press X to load up all the cheat menu, and you'll notice that the cheat menu has a few options. The cheat menu says, hey, you must turn this on to actually use cheats. So that's just for this game. Not all games have that. The next cheat that I like to use for Super Mario Bros. is skip intro. The reason for this is because I don't like to watch that intro a million times and I have watched it a million times that it just gets a little bit repetitive and I need a stray jacket. Bye bye. Okay, now let's press back and we're going to go down to a certain actual cheat. Some of these cheats have an info tab so you can see it says info right here. Press Y on that and it'll tell you how to actually activate that cheat. So pressing select will activate this cheat if you want to be Luigi or Mario. It's all up to you. So I'm going to select that and press save by pressing X. Now there's other options in here. I'm gonna let you know one thing. This does not have save states. This does not mean that, hey, this is gonna have a save state. This just means that if you select save number one, it's going to have a little bracket that says number one when you save your games. So don't touch that if you have already have saves on your SD card like I did. So that we can actually continue where we left off from the actual physical card that you see right here. Yes, I still own it. La 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 la. Okay, now let's press back. Let's navigate into Super Mario Bros and watch the magic happen. Now, for the very first time, when you load into a game, NDS Bootstrap is going to do its thing. Let it do its thing. Let it load. And then you'll load right into the game right away the next time that you actually load into a game. You don't have to worry about this long process. It's just doing a bunch of stuff in the background with zeros and ones and bringing you back to the matrix. And there we go. We'll have this little logo pop up. This means that NDS Bootstrap has done its magic and will be able to play new Super Mario Bros all day. And here we go. Let's go into our game. Let's check to see if we, well, we're still on World 3. I did not mean to rhyme that. Let's click select. Does that actually change our guy? Uh, maybe not. Let's go maybe into the game and see if that'll work. Now, oh, it did. We did, we did, we did change. Look it, we changed. We changed into Luigi. Woohoo! Yay, we're Luigi now. Now, okay, so that was cheats. One big thing that people are going to ask, or you're going to ask, is how do you get out of a game if you want to play a different NDS game? You press the L button, the down button, and select. A little menu will open up for your check. I don't know. I was just trying to rhyme something with that. Now this menu will allow you to quit your game. Forewarning. Before you actually do this, sometimes this doesn't work. You'll white screen, you'll white screen, you'll white screen. Oh, it worked this time. But sometimes at white screens, a lot of the games that do this are games like Pokemon because they're large games or any other large game that is. Now, you might be asking, why didn't you show how to load into any GBA games or any NES games? 
Well, that's because I have guides that are coming out for loading into those games that are going to be really quick, but it's really, really simple. It's a matter of putting your NES ROMs inside the folder and then navigating to the NES ROM and then playing it. It'll actually load right into the menu for that game system, which is just an emulator for the R4. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy this video, leave a thumbs down. Because I'm not Mr. Sugiano. I was just trying to be funny. Ha 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 ha. I love you all. Have a nice day. Bye bye.